with Vince McMahon unlikely to return to WWE and more, this is Wrestling Hub. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report for July 25th. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official and follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. On his Grill and JR podcast, Jim Ross spoke about the prospect of WWE going back to TV 14, which could lead to more viewers. The more people that watch Raw or SmackDown, believe it or not, helps AEW, generating interest in pro wrestling on any platform. What's that old saying about high tides, all ships? I think that's where we are here in this scenario. I hope it does well for them. During his appearance on the Broken Skull Sessions, Sami Zayn talked about his match against Johnny Knoxville where the giant mouse traps rope ended up breaking. You gotta give Johnny Knoxville a lot of respect for this. I'll explain because what happened is he pulled the rope and the rope broke. I mean, if he waited even two extra seconds, the finish is dead flat. But he saw it broken, he instantly, earlier in the day, actually saw him talking to his people with the mousetrap thing. He's like, okay, if it doesn't go off because you just show me how to do it manually. Full marks for not panicking because that would have killed it right there. He actually saved the day. Recalling their WWE debut for their A&E biography, the Bella Twins revealed that they were told many times to change their outfits. I was very nervous to go to TV. I just had a lot of pressure. We were entering a whole new group of women and dealing with TV time and money. If you look at television, there's probably 10 different segments, maybe 12, but there's only one for women. And that's a lot of women fighting for a spot. And then we put on our outfits, and then we were told, oh, looks like your pants look like bell bottoms. Some other girl wears bell bottoms. We're like, oh my gosh, oh, black and red? Well, someone else was black and red. You guys can't wear that. And Nicole and I just looked at each other and we're like, we were supposed to debut tonight. What are we going to do? The seamstresses at WWE, they were amazing. They're like, we'll help you. What do you have in your bag? And we're like, well, we have a tankini swimsuit, some BB workout pants, and they literally cut our swimsuits. They sew them onto our workout pants that we actually worked at in that day. And we made wrestling gear. On his podcast, Matt Hardy spoke about when the Bullet Club faction was gaining popularity and how Vince McMahon wanted to bring them into WWE. When this Bullet Club phenomenon was happening and they were selling all this merch, I mean, obviously, it was on Vince's radar. There was one point where Vince said, all these shirts, they keep showing up at our shows. These Bullet Club shirts. Who are these people? Who are these people? Where are they from? It's this real hot act. They're from New Japan. Sometimes they come over and do Ring of Honor stuff. And Vince said, I want them. I want them all. He got a lot of the Bullet Club, but he didn't get all of them. Revealing some of the inner workings when it comes to the creative situation in AEW, Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful reported that the general preferred process is that talent speaks to one of the AEW coaches who are then in contact with Tony Khan. If the conversations are about booking, they have to be relayed to Tony Khan. The coach passes on dozens of ideas either from themselves or talent to Khan, who is then in charge of making those ideas a reality or deciding they don't fit. Those answers are then to be relayed back to the talent. For those asking about names involved in that, it's usually AEW coaches, as well as Christopher Daniels, QT Marshall, Pat Buck. We're told that Mega and Sanjay Dutt also help out and Khan is in communication with them at least 10 times a day. Recently, former ROH champion Jonathan Gresham tried to get a meeting with Tony Khan, with him relaying frustration regarding his booking from Sanjay Dutt to the AEW president, which led to Gresham cussing out Khan and requesting his release. With AEW President Tony Khan previously taking to Twitter to brag about being the longest tenured CEO of a major wrestling company following Vince McMahon's retirement, Jim Cornette criticized Khan on his podcast saying, but Tony can't help but being an adolescent kid about this. Of all the things he could have said, that just comes off so childish and stupid. I'm sorry, Tony, but when you can brag about being a CEO 40 years or whatever, then that's something to brag about. But just because the other guy quit running and there's nobody else in the race doesn't really make you a superstar.
With him previously working in AEW as a manager before going on hiatus, Fightful has given an update on Tully Blanchard's status in the company. Tully Blanchard Enterprises leader didn't appear with his stable, and it was later revealed in storyline that Prince Nana had acquired the group. Blanchard was not at the show. There were mixed messages as to whether or not Blanchard outright missed his travel or there was confusion surrounding the travel. But we're told that Blanchard's prison ministry group was cited as the reason he wasn't there. Town and staff in ROH that inquired were told that Blanchard has effectively gone from the company and isn't figured into plans moving forward. Talking to Skewed and reviewed at the San Diego Comic-Con, AEW Champion CM Punk recalled his time in WWE where he talked about how that ruined wrestling for him. To me, it's fascinating listening to somebody. Jade Cargill said she hasn't worked for another company. It's important for her to be able to work in a place where she can fully express herself. I think that's kind of what, to me, killed wrestling for so long. Everything was muted and toned down and based on one person's perspective. When you can't pick your own name, pick your own entrance music, it's very limited and very creatively stifling. On the PW Torch podcast, Wade Keller talked about WWE CEO and chairwoman Stephanie McMahon and her current relationship with her brother Shane, who had previously been sent home by his father after he caused controversy with his production work at the Royal Rumble. I'm told Stephanie definitely has ideas. This is a job she has coveted since she was barely a teenager, maybe a preteen. I've told the story quite a bit over the years about Stephanie, and Jerry Jarrett told me the story on record that he was having dinner with the McMahons, and either he or someone at the table said, Shane, you know, someday you're going to be running the company company like your dad, and Stephanie was years younger than Shane, established her alpha attitude. She jumped in and said, uh, uh, daddy's little girl is going to be the one running the show someday, not Shane. That rivalry has been there. The divide between those two, I'm told, is still there, and there's no reconciliation or power sibling team expected. It's like, you know, the siblings hang out, they yell, they battle, and they double cross each other, but they hang out, and they talk, and the impression I'm getting is that it's not happening with Shane and Stephanie. So, by the way, don't expect Shane to enter the picture here unless he just, you know, goes rogue and just shows up at a show. When commenting on Stephanie's relationship with Paul Heyman, Keller said, he ran ECW. He revolutionized the wrestling industry. Without him, there is no attitude era, I don't think. And then, he has worked with WWE and he butted heads with Stephanie McMahon. As I've talked about in recent months, it seems like to people that have seen them that Heyman and Stephanie get along. You know, like genuinely, there's a chemistry and a dynamic between them that's very positive. And that's very different than, you know, 15, 20 years ago. So, Heyman is someone to watch. He's really, really smart, and he is a wrestling guy. With Vince McMahon stepping away from his company duties, WWE has now released an official statement naming new co-CEOs and more. WWE and its board of directors today announced the appointment of Stephanie McMahon and Nick Khan as co-chief executive officers. Ms. McMahon has also been appointed chairwoman of the board, and Mr. Khan will continue to serve as a member of the board. These appointments follow Vince McMahon's retirement announcement on Friday, July 22nd. We are grateful for the opportunity to lead WWE together with our unmatched management team, said Ms. McMahon and Mr. Khan. We recognize this is a tremendous opportunity opportunity and responsibility, we look forward to serving the WWE Universe. Additionally, WWE Executive Paul Levesque will assume all responsibilities related to WWE's creative, in addition to his regular duties. As many fans have been hoping for Triple H to be in control of creative for WWE, Fightful has reported on the optimism from stars over the game being head of talent relations in addition to creative duties. Talent reaction to the news was general excitement. There were some concerns raised when Bruce Prichard was both heading of creative and an interim talent relations role, as talent had asked the person that handled their creative stuff for time off if they wanted it. When it comes to the alleged hush money payments from Vince McMahon to multiple females employed by WWE, it was said that the company will now have those payments recorded as expenses. WWE has made a preliminary determination that certain payments that Vince McMahon agreed to make during the period of 2006 through 2022, including amounts paid and payable in the future, and that were not recorded in the WWE consolidated financial statements, should have been recorded as expenses in the quarters in which those agreements were made.
Building off the previous story, the Wrestling Observer noted that the millions of dollars in payments is what forced Vince McMahon out of WWE. It was not specified if the payments to women that had previously been claimed were by McMahon personally and not from company funds constitute some or all of that $14.6 million. But this would likely be something that, when uncovered, forced McMahon out of the company. The key to this revelation is that it would be almost impossible for McMahon to return to power, and this won't be a temporary departure until the heat dies down as many in wrestling over the past few days have believed, noting the company track record over the years with people who had gotten negative publicity over different things. And this was your pro wrestling news update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you later.